Hi everyone, welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer with Clean Machine, the founder and CEO of Clean Machine. <clears throat> this is a pretty cool one. Um, nice new study coming out, kind of lining up with a lot of the other research that's out there on testosterone. Now, this is interesting for both men and women because men and women both produce testosterone and both utilize testosterone for muscle strength, uh, for muscle recovery, for muscle gains, uh, for body fat reduction, for libido, for sleep and energy. So there's a lot of uh, positive health benefits of healthy, optimal levels of testosterone for both men and women. Now, definitely our nutrition, our exercise, our amount of sleep, these things all affect our hormone levels. And what's interesting is so does body fat. Now, body fat actually produces estrogen. It can actually change testosterone into estrogen. So the more body fat you're carrying, the, more, the higher propensity you are in producing estrogen rather than testosterone. Um, this can work against women because the women have a propensity to uh, hang on to a little bit more body fat. And this is for reproductive purposes so that you have enough extra calories to feed a child in case that you get pregnant. Well, <clears throat> now in modern era, and if you don't want to get pregnant, maybe hanging on to extra body fat is working against you. So obviously we know that testosterone can help improve recovery, can help improve strength gains and muscle gains, and also help reduce body fat by accelerating metabolism. So this is where it gets interesting. Vitamin D also plays a part and a role in this. And then the vitamin D is normally just taken up by the sun. Our body regulates it. And then vitamin D is actually not a vitamin at all. It's all hormones. It's called hormone D3, converts into another form, a bioactive form called, called 25-OH or 25-hydroxy vitamin D3. Okay, so what does all that science mean? Well, all right, let's dig into this study. The study just came out uh, this month, um, and it is an interesting study. Why? Uh, because it is actually the first study to examine the effect of BMI, body mass index, basically how much body fat you're carrying, on the relationship between 25-OHD, which is the bioactive form in the body, and testosterone, adding new evidence to the body of knowledge about the impact of BMI on metabolic hormones and sex hormones like testosterone and androstene dione, the precursor to testosterone. Okay, research shows that health and fitness benefits for both men and women. So I wanna make that a, a point. We're gonna be talking first about how it's effect on men and, and their testosterone levels, and then uh, women also too as well, especially for body fat. Okay, so there are many studies actually out there showing uh, vitamin D3 increasing muscular strength. I can uh, post a couple of those in the in the comments section. Yeah, let me grab them here. Muscle strength studies. I'm going to put three studies right up here in the comments section. So there you can see by these three studies that there are many different studies showing pretty much the same results of muscle strength up to 19% increase. Now that's a significant increase, especially if you're working out on a regular basis, that strength means you can push more weight. If you can push more weight, you stimulate the muscle to grow more and that can create increases in muscle size. Um, so definitely a correlation there, but why does D3 increase muscle strength? Well, some have proposed the idea that D3 has an effect on testosterone, and we know testosterone, increased testosterone levels will increase strength. That's a known. So they thought, oh, okay, we'll just take a look at it. Well, many of the studies in people who were insufficient or deficient in vitamin D3, that means their levels were too low, they found that it did, in fact, increase testosterone levels. 
But in other studies, they found it didn't do anything at all. So why is this? Well, let's take a look at some of the contributing factors. Okay, so the first contributing factor, I'm gonna go ahead and put these up on the screen so that you guys uh, can take a look at and follow along with me. I'll uh, put it in the comment section first, and then I'll just put it up on the screen. Let me see if I can do that, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So number one, um, the amount of D3 that was used in these different studies. Sometimes they're using as little as two or 400 IUs of vitamin D3, which is way too little in my personal opinion to get any significant result. So number two, the deficiency level. Were people severely deficient? Were they just insufficient or were they sufficient? Did they already have enough D3? If you have enough D3, maybe it's only insufficiency that causes a reduction in testosterone. Number three, the duration of the inter intervention. Some were only six to 10 days, maybe just two weeks, and it may take longer for continued use to actually found a profound effect, especially if you're using lower uh, amounts. They found that higher amounts of vitamin D can get you to uh, vitamin D sufficiency, optimal levels of vitamin D much faster than smaller amounts can. Number four, and this is the really the important one because this is what we're going to talk about in the study, is body fat levels. So vitamin D3 is fat soluble. That means fat cells can pull it up. So fat accumulation is one of the reasons what we're going to talk about in this study and a poor release. So it starts soaking up all the vitamin D3 out of the bloodstream, and then it's very poor at releasing it back when your body needs it. So the more body fat you're carrying, the more you're soaking up all that vitamin D3 that your body needs, and it's not available for your body to do that. So this study that we're going to look at actually looked at severely obese people, uh, what they call morbidly obese people, with a body mass index of 30 or more. And what they found was that because of all that fat, soaking up all that and poorly releasing it back, that they were getting problems with vitamin D3. And for this reason, you'll hear, probably hear uh, many physicians actually recommending much higher doses of vitamin D3 in supplement form for those that are carrying a lot more body fat. Now, this is true with women. Women tend to carry more body fat, a higher body fat percentage than men do. So women may actually need more. Um, and then uh, interestingly, the age of the person, as we age, vitamin D deficiency uh, increases. So we become less and less able to process um, the vitamin D3. That may have something to do with the melanin in our skin, which leads us to number six. So number six is ethnicity. Now I wanna make it clear, this is not about uh, your ethnicity per se, it's about the amount of melanin in the skin. So the darkness of your skin is controlled by melanin. Melanin is released into the skin. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the screen. Melanin is released into the skin for those in high uh, light exposure areas. So if you live in Africa or India, you're getting a lot of much more direct because of the curvature of the earth and you're closer to the sun, so you're getting more sunlight. Well, the body has a really cool way of regulating vitamin D3 production. If you took all of that uh, sunlight in, you'd overproduce vitamin D3. So as a response, the body secretes melanin in the skin and it darkens the skin, which makes it more reflective. That way the light doesn't activate vitamin D3 production. So those who are Hispanic, who, who are black, or who are dark skinned from different nationalities like India, if you, the darker your skin, the more melanin your skin, and that is an adaptive response to the amount of sun exposure. Now, with travel and with us living inside, we've taken people like Hispanics, like my wife, black people and Indian people with darker skin, and brought them indoors. Okay, so they are now in a worse off position than people with lighter skin. So as we migrated out of uh, high uh, uh, 
light areas, light from Africa and migrated to the north, northern parts, our skin lightened. We produce less melanin. Why? The curvature of the earth, the sunlight reflects on the curve. So the higher you get up north, the more reflection you have because of the curvature of our atmosphere. This lets less light into the system, less light onto our skin. So our body reacts by lightening our skin, producing less melanin so that more light can be soaked up and convert that vitamin D3. I know that's a long-winded expl explanation, but it's a really serious concern because vitamin D3 plays a significant role in our immune system. And I wanna make sure that people, especially those with darker skin, Blacks, Hispanics, Indians, other people who just have a lot of uh, sun exposure, the more melanin you're producing, the darker your skin, the less effective vitamin D3 is for you. Many of the studies have found to get optimal levels sometimes Blacks and Hispanics have to take three or four times as much vitamin D as a uh, lighter skinned person would do. So this is a very important factor. That and also the body fat. The higher the body fat, the more your body is soaking up that vitamin D3 and therefore it's not effective. It's not available for use. So let's take a look at the first study. This first study, I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen too as well. Impaired release of vitamin D in dysfunctional adipose tissue, new cues on vitamin D supplementation and obesity. So let's go ahead and uh, put that one up on the screen. No, doesn't look like it's going to let us. Okay, let me see if I can. All right, if not, uh, I'll just basically, uh, there we go. There it is. Okay, so this uh, study says vitamin D accumulates in adipose tissue. That means the, the body's fat cells are basically sucking up the vitamin D3 since it's fat soluble. And vitamin D uh, deficiency is frequent in obese people. So the higher the body fat you carry, the less effective vitamin D3 and maybe the more vitamin D3 or higher dosages you should be taking on a regular basis. Uh, consult with your doctor before um, before making any of those changes. Um, but it's very important, especially in this age of, of viruses. I'm going to read a uh, little notice, and I'm going to read this verbatim because it makes claims from physicians. I am not a physician. Um, this disclaimer is this video is for informational educational purposes only, is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So this, I'm gonna read verbatim. This is not my words. These are all the exact words of this paper published. Quote, in an open letter being sent to world governments today, 120 health, science, and medical experts from the UK, the US, and Europe say there is clear scientific evidence that vitamin D reduces COVID-19 infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. In the letter signed by over 120, and people are adding, the scientists, researchers are adding their names to it regularly, Scientists are calling for immediate widespread increased vitamin D intake of 4,000 IUs, which is 100 micrograms. That is the exact amount that you'll find in uh, our vegan D3 and part of the reason why I did that. It is the top recommendation for boosting the immune system across the board for the elderly, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your body fat. This is the amount that they found would, would reach the vast majority of people and get them into immune state. So I'm gonna read this again verbatim, quote, they say new mechanisms specific to SARS-CoV-2, which is the proper name for COVID-19, are now very well understood with the body of evidence, including multiple biological me mechanisms that have been identified showing how vitamin D directly influences COVID-19 outcomes. More than 70 studies 
showing higher vitamin D levels are associated with lower rates of infection and lower risk of hospitalization, ICU, intensive care units, or death, as well as early causal inference studies confirmed by recently published randomized controlled trials, RCTs, for healthy adults. You can find that online. I'll post it in the comments section too, but this is one more very powerful reason why vitamin D supplementation is so important. Look, we were outside normally in our early uh, ancestry and getting lots of sun exposure. We're not, we're living indoors as I am right now and we're working indoors and we're not getting the sun exposure. This is why vitamin D supplementation can be such a, a big part of it for our immune health, for our muscle strength, and even for our testosterone levels. So let's get back to the testosterone and the body fat. Okay, so this is the study we're gonna really dive into. This is a study that was just released this month. And it's an interesting study because it just adds to the body of evidence. I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen too as well. So 25 hydroxy vitamin D, that's the active form that vitamin D3 that you take as a supplement or get from the sun uh, is in our body. So 25 uh, OHD and testosterone levels association through body mass index. This is a cross-sectional study of young men with obesity. So this is an interesting one that they took a look at obesity and they took a look at testosterone and they took a look at vitamin D3 because Vitamin D3, we know, increases strength. We know testosterone increases strength. We know body fat actually lowers testosterone. And we know that um, uh, in some studies that uh, vitamin D3 supplementation can increase it. Now, the reason why there may only be some studies that show an increase in testosterone and some that don't could be that body fat. Now, let's dive into the study. So this cross-sectional study looked at 269 healthy young men with that were obese. Uh, definition of obese is over 30 BMI. And this is a quote. We found that the 25 OHD deficiency group had significantly lower uh, serum total and free testosterone levels. So those who had deficiency in vitamin D3 also had corresponding low, total, and free. Free is the active form of testosterone. In fact, obesity significantly influences circulating levels of vitamin D3. Okay, so when you've got the levels of vitamin D3 and a correlation to testosterone, and then two, you've got the body levels of fat and correlating with it. So what did they find? So I'll quote directly from the study. On the other hand, testosterone deficiency is very common feature in males with obesity, in which there is a causal effect of BMI on serum testosterone levels. More body fat you have, the more your body is actually going to produce estrogen, which has a negative feedback loop on testosterone and can lower testosterone levels. This is why those eating a healthy plant-based diet, you lower your body fat in general, and as long as you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and keeping your calories in check, you're lowering your body fat and that will increase your testosterone levels. Bringing that body fat up by eating high saturated fat and animal products, that can actually lower your testosterone levels. So no eating meat with high saturated fat and it is actually going to do a lowering effect on your masculinity, a lowering effect on your muscle, your strength, your libido, your ability uh, to reproduce, all of those things that are tied into uh, healthy testosterone levels. Okay, back to the study. That is because fat cells in moderate obesity predominantly metabolize testosterone to estrogen and consequently, decrease the serum levels of testosterone. So the, the, the fat cells themselves are creating test, uh, estrogen, but they're doing this by grabbing testosterone out of the bloodstream and converting it through aromatase into estrogen. That's right. Fat cells are taking your testosterone and turning it 
into estrogen. Not a good thing. I mean, we all need estrogen, both men and women. We all need testosterone, both men and women. But when the body gets out of balance because you're carrying too much body fat, it can become a problem and give you results that you don't want. Um, so increased estrogen production therefore has, a, has been associated with a negative feedback on LH or luteinizing hormone secretion. So this is the negative feedback loop. So it gets kind of vicious. Not only is your fat cells grabbing testosterone, converting it to estrogen and feminizing you, not so good. Uh, this is where guys can get actual man boobs because the amount of the estrogen is being produced to stimulate memory uh, tissue development. Not a good thing. And this is why you see really, really fat guys with man boobs. That's exactly what's happening. That's that high levels of estrogen created by the fat and subsequently lowering their testosterone. But not only that, it has a negative feedback loop, which gets your body to stop producing LH. LH is released from the pituitary and is what stimulates testosterone production. So not only are you robbing the body by carrying body fat, you're robbing the body of testosterone, you're converting it to more estrogen, and then on top of that, you're suppressing even more production, <laughs> any more production of testosterone. So you're compounding a worsening effect just by carrying body fat. So the conclusion of this study was serum 25-OHD, the active form. Once you take vitamin D3 as a supplement, it converts to 25-OHD is associated with total testosterone levels in only those with a higher obesity. So that has an obesity effect. So one, if you're deficient in vitamin D3, you can bring yourself back up to sufficiency. And this has been shown to have a positive effect on testosterone levels. And then second, if you're obese, you may actually have to take even more to get yourself back up to those levels because your body is soaking up that and you're working against your body. Obviously, the best thing to do is bring down those body fat levels, both for men and women. Now, this is where it gets interesting on for women, because this is a pretty cool study. I'm going to put this study up on the screen, because this one is actually a pretty recent study, too, as well. I'll put this up on the screen for ladies out there. <clears throat> I think you're really going to like this study. <laughs> Okay, so um, alterations of liver enzymes and lipid profile in response to exhaustive eccentric, e eccentric exercise. Vitamin D supplementation trial in overweight females with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Okay, so what does all that mean? It's a bunch of science. Let me, let me break it down for you. So they were actually looking at uh, 22 overweight women with, not obese, but just overweight, with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Okay, so what is that? That's when the body starts accumulating fat. One of the very first places the body will start accumulating fat is around the liver. Now, if you accumulate too much fat around the liver, it can actually cause liver damage or liver dysfunction. So that's what they call non-alcoholic, which means alcoholics get this because their liver becomes really fatty and it's one of the causes of cirrhosis, but that's alcoholism that causes that. What this is, is non-alcoholic, not caused by alcohol. So this is dietary, basically, dietary fatty liver disease is basically what they're saying. Okay, so why does the body accumulate liver uh, fat around the liver? Because the liver is one of the very first places that can break down that fat and use it for energy. So it makes sense, right? That's efficiency. Take it right to the place where that fat is going to be broken down. And then when it starts to get too fatty, it'll actually start storing fat subcutaneously. This is the fat skin. And then even worse, start storing fat in the body. That's called trunk fat. These are where it starts storing fat around your heart and your kidneys. This is really dangerous because these can lead to serious uh, diseases and death. Um, and that's what obesity can really do, especially in the muscle tissue where it can cause type two diabetes. All right, so what's the deal with this study? Okay, so in this study, it's a, and I'm gonna make it clear, this is a very small clinical trial, but it was an important one because of the results that came out of it. 
So in this, they took 22 women and they gave them 2000 IUs of vitamin D, uh, D3 per day for six weeks. Remember, this is just six weeks of 2000, which is a little bit on the low side, for me personally, um, my wife takes uh, four to 8,000 because she is Hispanic uh, to try to get her levels back up to normal levels. And it did take actually a little bit longer than this. So the shortness of this study, only six weeks and the amount being 2000 I use actually makes this study even more promising because of the significant results. And I will put up the results on the screen because I think you're gonna like them. Okay, so what happened to the people and the women in this study who took the 2000 IUs of vitamin D3 supplementation for six weeks? Boom. The results indicated the vitamin D supplementation significantly reduced body weight, body fat percentage, BMI, your body mass index, and actual physical waist to hip ratio. I mean, that's as good as it gets. That's just taking 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3 for six weeks, and they reduce body weight, body fat percentage, BMI, and rate, and external body fat. Now, sometimes the body will get rid of internal body fat first before it does subcutaneous or um, the stored on the outside of the skin. The, the fact that you're seeing actual uh, waist to hip ratio decreases means that skin fold fat that's pretty amazing because that's the, the stuff that people don't like because of the way it looks on them. So this is interesting. I think it's more important personally to uh, get rid of the inside fat, the trunk fat, since it's much more dangerous for your health. But I think we can see that the, the body is doing both. The, the next part of this is, is, I think, even more important and maybe not as much per se, for uh, vegans and vegetarians, specifically vegans, um, because uh, vegans generally don't have too much lipid problems. But the study also found in women significantly lowered their bad LDL cholesterol and significantly increased the HDL, the good cholesterol. And that's in the vitamin D supplementation where they found no change in those in the control group. Pretty cool study. And again, this one just came out. So I'll bring these brand new studies to you as, as we go. Now, when I, uh, you know, have been vegan for 37 years, obviously, um, vitamin D3 is a difficult to find without supplementation in our food source. It's not naturally occurring in, in most plants. And we've only found it in um, mushrooms, in lichen, which is a form of algae, or just plain algae. Now, uh, lichen and D3, uh, lichen and uh, mushrooms can uh, naturally produce vitamin D2. But when you expose them to direct sunlight, they can switch over to producing vitamin D3. I was kept hoping that somebody would discover an actual vitamin D3 uh, in a vegan source that was one, was a pure vitamin D3, not possibly a mix of vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Now, now, why is that important? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put up this study on the screen um, because I wanna show you the difference of vitamin D2, which you could find in some multivitamins still being used today and vitamin D3. And also some of the vegan uh, vitamin D3s out there, which are using lichen and mushroom, could be a mix of vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. So this study, uh, vitamin D2 is much less effective than vitamin D3 in humans. Well, the title of the study kind of says it all. But the quote from the study, vitamin D2 potency is less than one third of that of vitamin D3. So if you're taking a certain amount of vitamin D2 mix in there, then you don't know if that's interfering with vitamin D3, if it's binding to the receptor sites and, and, and causing a uh, not being use of the vitamin D3. We're not really sure what's going on in the human body, but we do know that it's far less effective. Physicians resorting to the use of vitamin D2 should be aware of the markedly lower potency and shorter duration action 
relative to vitamin D3. That's why D3 is so important and why I was looking for a vegan source that is pure D3, not a mix of vitamin D3 and D2. Well, I finally found that and I found it in veg D3. That's what I chose to put in vegan D3. This is the first one that's 100% pure. So you actually get this down to the vitamin. Let me go and put it up there for you so you can see it closer. Vitamin D3. This is a pure veg D3. It is 100% pure crystalline form of vitamin D3. No impurities that you might find in other vegan D3 products out there. It's the only one that is 100% pure. Um, not only that, it's the only one that's 100% organic from algae. So this is really cool too. I finally found one that is pure D3 and that is organic from algae, a vegan source. Well, I wanted to know how good it was and uh, how potent it was. Um, so I waited until they did a human study. And here's what they found in the human study. I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen. In a recent human study, Veg D3, that's the kind, the, the only pure source that's from organic um, algae that we use in our product, was shown to be highly bioavailable, increasing plasma uh, vitamin D levels by 77%. That's amazing because you don't generally see that kind of spike in elevation and that will get help people get them faster. It's fast acting. In this study, the subjects taking the vitamin D3 went from vitamin D3 deficient to vitamin D sufficient. That means that's uh, uh, enough levels to uh, help the body function as properly in just seven days one week of taking this and they moved from insufficient to sufficient. So remember when you're talking about the testosterone levels, both men and men, women need it. You are saying if the D3 is too low, that's going to bring down potentially the testosterone levels. You bring it back up to sufficient levels and you can optimize your testosterone too as well. Now, it doesn't work by stimulating it, but it, it appears, and we're not certain on this, but it appears to have a function. And the reason why I say that is because those who were uh, insufficient in vitamin D3 actually had higher levels of the precursor of testosterone, androstene dione. This is what then converts to testosterone. So why was the body building up in, in androstene dione? Why did those who were too low in vitamin D3 have higher amounts of the precursor, but it wasn't converting? to testosterone. And that may be the function. This hasn't been borne out in research yet, but I'm estimating based on what we're observing that those, when you raise the levels of um, vitamin D3 to sufficiency, you're getting higher levels and normalizing levels of testosterone. Now, when it's too low, what you're finding is more uh, of the precursor of testosterone in men. So that means that that's, the body is making the precursor, but it's not finalizing that last step in converting to testosterone until the body actually gets sufficient on the vitamin D3, and then it brings up that testosterone level. So really fascinating how this hormone D3 can have effect on our sex hormones and how body fat soaking up all that uh, vitamin D3 can inhibit the body's ability to use that D3 to convert androstene dione into testosterone. So that's the whole correlation between vitamin D3, make sure you're getting sufficient amounts, make sure you bring that body fat down, and that's how you can help get healthy levels of testosterone for both men and women. Okay, so, so, so what are some other ways that you can increase? Let me pull up the right study. And here we go. Let's see. Okay. I put together a killer 
<laughs> Good workout, if I don't mind saying so myself. Now, this was interesting because I was looking for something that was more effective than creatine, the most effective, most safest, most effective uh, product out there for building muscle uh, that m most researchers would agree upon. And this company went out and actually used AI, artificial intelligence. They use machine learning. They basically told the computer to go out and find the best possible known uh, herbs that would work synergistically together to produce the best results for muscle size, muscle strength, and endurance, as well as testosterone levels. And they found it. And the computer spit out these two incredible herbs. The first one was uh, uh, Indian globe thistle. And the second one is called mango tree bark. Yeah, the good old mango tree. <laughs> it's high in a, uh, a polyphenol called mangiferin. When you put those two together, they had extraordinary results. And these are the results. I'm going to go ahead and put them up on the screen for you. So the RIT factor is the name of this patented uh, studied ingredient. So this was uh, all those uh, ingredients that I used in our pre-workout are patented, are, are uh, proprietary, and they are uh, been studied in human studies. So you don't have to count on me to say this is the results. No, you can actually look up the research yourself and see those results. You can see that the same amount in N10s, the pre-workout, it's the exact same ingredient, same amounts to get you those positive effects. So up to four times increase in muscle size with two scoops, up to 20% increase in muscle strength, up to 35% more endurance for those of you runners, swimmers, and triathlons, uh, triathletes out there, and up to a 21% increase in free testosterone in men. So these are the types of results that you can get from when you combine the D3. Remember, that'll give you the uh, up to 19% increase in strength gains, and that's published human research as well as N10s, when you combine them together, you can increase your testosterone levels to healthy levels for both men and women, get the strength gains you're looking for, get the muscle gains you're looking for, get that body fat reduction down so that you can have results like this at any age, including a 60-year-old, near 60-year-old dude like me. So this is why I put together these products with these extraordinary herbs and plants that aren't in our food system. You know, some people say, well, why supplement? Why supplement? Because we're not getting direct sunlight from vitamin D3, because we're not, uh, how many of you out there are eating uh, mango tree bark on a daily basis? Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> and, and these have published human studies, so it's not hype, it's not BS that you hear from many other, unfortunately, sports nutrition companies. This is real, studies, published human studies, backed by it, proving their efficacy, proving that they are effective. Um, so you don't have to take our direct words. You can, you can look up the studies, see that we're using the exact same patented ingredients and same amounts so that you can trust that you'll get the results that you're looking for that are posted on the label, not just some marketing hype. I hate that. I hate that. When I, I know the research, I read the research all the time. And when I see other companies out there posting false claims that are just ridiculous, they're absurd, don't have any real human research behind them. Maybe an animal study wasn't even using the same amount, not even the same ingredient that was used in the study. And I'm like, don't do that because people are not going to get the results that you're claiming. I want you to get the results you claim because that's what you're paying for when you buy our products. That's what I believe in. I don't know, call me, call me old fashioned, but that's what I want to deliver. I want to deliver real results so you can look great, you can feel great, you can live a healthy, fit life. That's what I want for you. And that's why I do what I do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I know we dove into a lot of deep science, but I hope it's helpful to you especially because D3 is such an important supplement. 
it's one that I personally would suggest everybody uh, think about, uh, consider taking. Uh, vitamin D3 supplementation is so important to our immune health, so important to our bone health, so important to our brain health, so important to our hormone health, even fitness results in strength and muscle gains, so important. So it's such an easy and inexpensive, and I wanna bring you the best versions of it. That's why I brought you the first one that's 100% pure, vegan, and 100% organic from algae. That's my commitment to you. I'll bring you the best of the best always. For those of you who want it, you got it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week for another Facebook Live. Thanks.